Hey everyone, Decav13 here, and welcome back to Let's Play Fate Stay Night. Uh, so last time Shiro died. <laughs> um, very curious how things are gonna go from here, but you know we'll see what happens. I guess. Not really much I can say, huh? Uh, but yeah, let's uh, continue on day four. partner winter five years ago it was a beautiful moonlit night I was just enjoying the sight with my father Kiritsugu Emiya it was winter but it wasn't very cold on the veranda it was just a little chilly the perfect weather to watch the moon Kiritsugu didn't go outside much anymore he rarely went out, and he spent most of his time lounging around the house. Every time I recall this, I still feel regret. Why didn't I realize that he was acting the way any creature does when they know their time is almost up? He blurted it out, just out of nowhere. My father, who already seemed like a champion of justice in my eyes, said that as, he, as if he was reflecting on a memory. I asked, unable to completely hide my disappointment. Kiritsugu smiled apologetically and looked up at the distant moon. Hmm. That made sense to me. I wasn't sure why, but if Kiritsugu said it, then it had to be true. <laughs> Kiritsugu nodded in agreement. So I just kind of blurted something out as if it were a natural thing to say. The bold promise made my father smile. His face said everything I needed to know. Kiritsugu made a long, contented sigh and whispered, oh. There he closed his eyes, and so too his life came to a close. He looked so peaceful, like he was just going to wake up in the morning, so I didn't think much about it. Maybe it was because by then I was used to seeing death. On a winter night, the man I called my father looked up at the moon and entered a long sleep. The yard was dead silent, not so much as a single chirp from an insect. I still remember how fiercely my eyes blazed on that bright, clear night. I didn't cry aloud, nor did I feel sad. The tears flowed down my cheek until the moon sank past the horizon. This happened in the winter five years ago. I probably cried ten years worth of tears in that time, so after that there was nothing left. Fujine's dad took care of all the funeral arrangements, and that's how I ended up living in the Emiya mansion all alone. Kiritsugu's passing didn't change anything for me. I was set on becoming a man who champions justice and does what's right just like my father, so I didn't have time to sit around. That's right. I never talk about this, but I still remember it. Ten years ago, a man saved me from a fire. He picked up a burned, dying child and carried him out of hell, weeping with joy. I've admired him ever since. Nobody saved me. I couldn't save anyone. In the ruins of the fire, there was only a boy who was saved, and the man who saved him. That's why I aspire to be like him. I wanted to become a hero of justice that saves people and doesn't let anyone die. That's who he wanted to be, and he passed his wish on to me before quietly letting the curtain fall. It's only natural for a child, child to follow in their father's footsteps. Shiro Emiya must become a hero of justice and save someone the same way that he was once saved. I swore to myself I would do it. 
I vowed to fulfill the dream of the man I most admired. But honestly, I didn't know how. What did Kiritsugu mean by doing the right thing and championing, championing justice? How can I grow up faster? Is there some magical way to make Kiritsugu's dream of making everyone happy come true? Seriously, what am I supposed to do when I become a master and I can't get the blonde girl with me out of my head? I wake up in my room. The steely tang of blood clouds my mouth. It pooled in my mouth while I slept, and every time I breathed, heavy metallic air filled my lungs. I'm not sure why I feel this way. A violent urge to vomit makes me want to go wash my face in the restroom. I lift myself out of bed. Dizziness sets my head spin sets my head spinning. Feeling uneasy on my feet, I plant a hand on the wall. I try to move, but it only makes the nausea worse. No, it's more pain than nausea. My body feels sluggish, and my insides seem to churn whenever I move. I imagine this is about what it'd feel like if someone forced hot lead down my throat. <laughs> I wipe the sweat from my forehead and hobble out of my room, leaning against the wall. I wash my face and dry off my sweat-drenched body. For some reason, my abdomen is wrapped in bandages. I have no idea why, but I'll deal with it later. My stomach still feels like it's churning, but my body needs nourishment. I suck up the discomfort and keep walking, braced against the wall. The dizziness won't go away, and worst of all, my whole body feels dull. I keep moving forward, making pathetic noises along the way. What the hell did I do before I went to bed last night? I don't remember training strenuously enough to make my entire body ache. I reach the living room. Sakura and Fujine must be at school. There's no signs of breakfast, nor do I see any remnants of Fujine wrecking the place. The living room's quiet like a typical Sunday. Or not. <laughs> Rin Tosaka is sitting on the floor by the table in the living room. She's so calm like she owns the place. So much so that I feel like the guest here. I have no idea what to say, so I plop down on a cushion. And then I take a deep breath. I can't even finish asking why she's in my house. Tosaka's glare is all I need to know how angry she is. She seems upset about something that happened last night, but what exactly? Mother. I remember now. Right, this isn't the time for me to be leisurely breathing in the morning air. I tried to help Saber and Berserker gutted me like a fish. The nausea returns. A chill gra grips my entire body as I remember the feeling of, ha of having a gaping hole in my body. Wait, that's weird. I should have died instantly. Tosaka huffs critically. That kind of ticks me off. My brain, frozen since seeing Tosaka in my living room, finally grinds into action. I return her glare, insisting that I'm not an idiot. 
what? Why is she making such a show of sighing at me? マスターが死んだらサーバントは消えるって言ったでしょ I knew I might die if I got near a monster like that, but that's besides the point. So, Tosaka only looks more irritated, like she knows exactly what I'm thinking. あれはね、何も知らないあなたが一人でも生き残れるようにって考えた結果なの。どうもそのあたりは分かってなかったみたいね。俺が生き残れるように。そうよ。負けることがそのまま死に繋がるって知れば、そう簡単に爆地は打た
そうなると原因はサーバントねあなたのサーバントはよっぽど強力なのかそれとも召喚の時に何か手違いが生じたのかまあ両方だと思うけど何らかのラインがつながったんでしょうねラインラインって使い魔と魔術師を結ぶ因果線のことあらちゃんと使い魔の知識はあるじゃないなら話は早いわ要するにエミヤ君とセイバーの関係は普通の主人と使い魔の関係じゃないってこと見たところセイバーには自然治癒の力もあるみたいだからそれがあなたに流れてるんじゃないかな Oh, yeah, I guess I do know something about that, huh? That a servant can influence their contracted master's、uh, abilities. Something, there's something kind of similar in FGO where MASH gives the master poison resistance. So I guess Saber has some kind of healing ability that she can pass on to her master that she also uses as well. Okay. I'm not sure if you're a magician, but I'm not sure if you're a magician, but I'm not sure if you're a magician. あなたの場合は使い魔の特殊能力が主人を助けてるってわけ、うん、簡単に言って川の水が下から上に流れているようなもんかうまい例えね本来ならありえないだろうけどセーバーの魔力ってのは川の流れを変えるほど膨大なんでしょうそうでなければあの体格でバーサーカーとまともに打ち合うなんて考えられない本来ならありえないあじゃあ遠坂とアーチャーは普通の魔術師と使い魔の関係なのかそうよ人の言うこと全然聞かないやつだけど一応そういう関係<笑>マスターとサーバントのつながりなんてガソリンとエンジンみたいなものだものこっちがマルクを提供してあっちがそれを食べるだけまあ中には肉体面でもサーバントと共有して疑似的な不死を得たマスターもいたそうよーサーバントが死なない限り自分も死なないなんていうやつなんだけどヘミヤ君人の話聞いてるえああ聞いてるじゃあ父さか俺の体って多少の傷はほっといても治るってことかあなたのサーバントの魔力を消費してね理屈はわからないけど原因がセイバーの実体化にあることは間違いないわあなたが自然治癒の呪いなんて習得しているはずはないから当たり前だそんな難しいこと親父から教えてもらったことないからなそうじゃなくてそうだったら私が悩む必要はなかったっていうことよいいわあなたには関係のない話だからはっ What does she mean? I wonder why Tosaka is being so roundabout. まあいいわ。とにかくあまり無茶はしないこと。今回は助かったからいいけど、次にあんな傷を負ったらまず助からないはずだから、多少の傷なら治るなんていう甘い考えは捨てた方がいいでしょうね。わかってる。俺が勝
東坂がここに残った本題ってやつだろいいよ聞こうじゃあ率直に聞くけどエミヤ君あなたこれからどうするつもり Tosaka asks the one question I hoped she wouldn't. Actually, that's not entirely true. It's not that I don't want her to ask so much as I haven't really thought of my answer yet. What am I going to do now? It's the question I want to ask. More than anything, I want to avoid any killing. サーバントの目的も聖杯だから。彼らは聖杯を手に入れるという条件だからこそ、マスターの召喚に応じているのよ。サーバントにとって最も重要なのは聖杯なの。彼らは聖杯を手に入れる可能性があるから、マスターに従
へえそれじゃあミスミス殺されるのを待つだけなんだで勝ちを他のマスターに譲るのねそうじゃない要は最後まで残っていればいいんだろ自分から殺し合いをする気はないけど身を守るための戦いなら容赦はしないさ人を殺しに来る相手なら逆に殺されても文句は言えないだろうふん受けに回るんだそれじゃあ他のマスターが何をしようが傍観するのね例えば昨日のあいつが暴れ回って町の人間を皆殺しにしても無視するってわけ Thing from yesterday. That twisted inhuman demon. It's strong enough to level a house with a single blow. If it sets its mind to it, I'm sure it could destroy all of Miyama overnight. To make matters worse, servants can turn into spirit form. Humans who lack the ability to sense the supernatural can't even see them. But as soon as servants materialize, they can interact with the physical world. You'd say they're the ultimate weapons. No modern technology or weaponry could affect a spiritual form. Our attacks won't, don't work on them, but they can hurt us. It's a depressingly one-sided arrangement. From a normal person's point of view, servants may as well be natural disasters. <sighs> When people die to an invisible killer, those deaths will just be treated as accidents or natural causes. What is that? A servant? No, master and servant are not the other masters. They are not the other masters. Oh shit. Keep drifting my mouse over too far. Eh, so that that I don't know any hair on a photo car. Kiddo, so that I'm to do the yak no kill and the other night. So, he told me was a little bit of a kiddo. So, I want to be in a lane. No, Carrera, I'm more cancer. Some of the car. I'm I don't know. Say, Joe, I'm not. けど、燃料である魔力は別よ蓄えた魔力が多ければ多いほどサーバントは生前の特殊能力を自由に行使できるわそのあたりは私たち魔術師と一緒なんだけどあなたこの意味わかるわかる魔術を連発できるってことだろうマジカルエネルギーは、like、ガンパウダー The mage is the gun itself Like how there are different guns, pistols, rifles, shotguns, mages all have a variety of abilities. To continue the metaphor, servants are more like artillery cannons than firearms. They burn a huge amount of gunpowder to launch massive shells. So, yo, Kedo, servant to Tachiwa, but as Tachimita in Shizen Karamana, or take your salatiru Akesanai. Kihon, so you hold your surinoga, but as Tachimasta, the servant to a Jibun no Mario Kupras. ある字であるマスターの魔力分しか生前の力を発揮できないのけどそれだとあなたみたいに半人前のマスターじゃ優れたマスターにはかなわないってことになるでしょその抜け道っていうか当たり前って言えば当たり前の方法なんだけれどサーバントは他から魔力を補修できるサーバントは霊体だから同じものを食べてしまえば栄養は取れるってこと Eating something similar. Onaji mono te leitai no koto ka. Kedo, nan no lei o taberu te yonda yo. Kantan de shou. Shizen lei wa shizen sono mono kara chikara o kumi toru. Nara, ningen lei de aru servant wa ittai nani kara chikara o kumi toru to omou? Really is an easy question. Just as we eat meat, human spirits like servants have to eat. ごめんとまあ魔力の補充なんて聖杯に補助されたマスターからの提供だけで大抵は事足りるけど一人より大勢の方が大量摂取できるのは当然でしょはっきり言ってしまえばね実力のないマスターはサーバントに人を食わせるのよサーバントは人間の原感情や魂を魔力に変換する。自分のサーバントを強くしたいのならそれが一番効率がいい
人間を殺してサーバントへの生贄にするマスターは決して少なくないわ生贄にするってそれじゃあ手段を選ばないやつがマスターならサーバントを強くするために人を殺しまくるってことなのかそうねけど頭のいいやつならそんな無駄なことはしないんじゃないかないいサーバントがいくら協力でも魔力の器そのものには限界がある能力値以上の貯蔵はできないんだから殺して回るにしても限度があるわ、うん、それにあからさまに殺人を犯せば教会が黙ってないし何よりその死因からサーバントの能力と正体が他のマスターたちにバレかねないもちろんマスター自身の正体もね聖杯戦争は自分の正体を隠していた方が圧倒的に有利だから普通のマスターならサーバントを脱し惜しみするはずよ I get it If you don't let anyone know you're a master then the other masters won't attack you Conversely, if the other masters know who you are, you're just asking to be ambushed. It stands to reason that no one would be reckless enough to let their servant attack civilians and risk getting exposed. よかった。ならは問題はないじゃないか。マスターが命令しなければ、サーバントは無差別に人を襲わないんだから。でしょうね。仮にも英雄だもの、自分から人を殺して回るやつは、そもそも英雄だなんて呼ばれないだろうけど
そういうこと分かった何もしないままで聖杯戦争の終わりを待つなんて選択肢はないってことがはいそれは分かったけど父さかお前さっきから何を言いたいんだよ死刑宣告された俺を見るのが楽しいってわけでもないだろってもしかして楽しいのかそこまで悪趣味じゃないもうここまで言ってるのにわからない要するに私と手を組まないかって言ってるのうんうん ?What now? Uh, what? If I take those words at face value, that means. So, what is your child? She may show you get a mock at your chair. Can't any kind of silver with a chicken gaga carcado. So, the more honey, my girl, and the Katia Kuade Kiru has you. De, so to a servant to a moshi bun like a do, Master Gashi, but the Yapari honey, my. ほら、合わせればちょうどいいわ<笑>俺そこまで半人前なんかじゃないぞ私が知る限りでもう3回も死にそうになったのに1日で3回も殺されかける人間なんて初めて見たけど<笑>けどそれは同盟の対価ぐらいは払うわアーチャーを倒されたことはチャラにしてあげてマスターとしての知識も教えてあげるあああと暇があればエミヤ君の魔術の腕を見てあげてもいいけど really not a bad deal for Shiro、uh, It is an attractive proposition I know next to nothing and Tosaka does seem knowledgeable and I'd like to avoid fighting her if I can エミヤ君答え聞かせてほしいんだけど She urges me to make a choice. I. Besides, I don't have much choice. There's too much I don't know, and I have no experience as a mage. If Tosaka's offering to help me, however temporary, it's an offer I can't turn down. ひまりねそれじゃあ握手しましょうとりあえずバーサーカーを倒すまでは味方同士ってことでああそっかやっぱりそういうことだよな仕方ないけどその方が分かりやすいか I shake the offered hand I'm a little perplexed Tosaka's hand is so soft it reminds me she's a girl my hand in comparison is covered with scratches and seems a poor match for hers The moment I think that, I find myself getting embarrassed. I quickly pull my hand back. Tosaka looks at me strangely. <laughs> Her face turns mischievous. つまんないこと言ったら契約破棄するからなするぞ絶対するからなあなた女の子の手を握るの初めてだったんでしょう<笑>なんだ顔が広いように見えて白っては奥手なんだ違うそんなんじゃなくてただ There's no way in hell I could say I got embarrassed because it was her and yeah fine I haven't really touched a girl so intimately, intimately before but And、no, Fujinai doesn't count. She's more like something from a different planet than someone of a different gender. <laughs> What Tosaka just say? I don't know where she'd been keeping it, but she tugs out a giant book and slaps it on the table. It looks like a diary. There's no title, and the cover is wine red.、It、seems to be Tosaka's trademark color. 
私の父さんの持ち物だけどもういらないからあげる一人前のマスターには必要ないものだけどあなたには必要だと思って Tosaka gestures for me to flip the road. I open to a random page. And then. There's nothing written on the pages, but strange image suddenly pops into my head. Tosaka, what is this? I'm going to go to the next page. 聖杯戦争には決められたルールがあるのはもう分かってるでしょそれはサーバントにも当てはまるのまず呼び出される英霊は7人だけその7人も聖杯があらかじめ作っておいたクラスになることで召喚が可能となる英霊そのものを引っ張ってくるよりその英霊に近い役割を作っておいてそこに本体を呼び出すっていうやり方ね口寄せとか高齢術は呼び出した霊を術者の中に入れて何らかの助言をさせるでしょそれと同じ時代の違う霊を呼び出すにはあらかじめ箱を用意しておいた方がいいのよクラスはあそれでセイバーはセイバーなのかそういうこと英霊たちは正体を隠すものだって言ったでしょだから本名は絶対口にしない自然彼らを表す名称は呼び出されたクラス名になるでその用意されたクラスはセイバーランサーアーチャーライダーキャスターアサシンバーザーカーの7つ聖杯戦争の度に1つや2つはクラスの変更はあるみたいだけど今回は基本的なラインナップね通説によると最も優れたサーバントはセイバーだとかこれらのクラスはそれぞれ特徴があるんだけどサーバント自体の能力は呼び出された英霊の核によって変わるから注意して英霊の核あつまり生前どれくらい強かったかってことかそれもあるけど彼らのの能力を支えるのは知名度よ生前何をしたかどんな武器を持っていたかってのは普遍のものだけど彼らの基本能力はその時代でどのくらい有名なのかで変わってくるわ英霊は神様みたいなものだから人間にあがめられるほど強さが増すの存在が濃くなるとでも言うのかしらね信仰を失った心霊が精霊に落ちるのと一緒で。人々に忘れ去られた英雄にはそう大きな力はないもっとも忘れられていようが知られていなかろうが元が強力な英雄だったらある程度の能力は維持できると思うけどじゃあ多くの人が知っている英雄でかつその武勇伝も並み外れていたら間違いなく A ランクのサーバントでしょうねそういった意味でもバーサーカーは最強かもしれない何しろギリシャ神話に受ける最も有名な英雄だもの神代の英雄たちはそれだけで特殊な宝具を持っているっていうのに英雄自体が強いんじゃ手の打ちようがない父さかその宝具ってなんだそのサーバントが生前使っていたシンボル英雄と魔剣聖剣の類はセットでしょ要するに彼らの武装のことよ武器ってセイバーの見えない剣とかまあねあれがどんな威惑を持っているか知らないけどセイバーのあれは間違いなく宝具でしょ言うまでもないと思うけど英雄ってのは人命だけじゃ伝説には残れない彼らにはそれぞれトレードマークとなった武器があるそれが奇跡を願う人々の思いの結晶ノーブルファンタズムとされる最上級の武装なわけ、うん、要するに強力なマジックアイテムってことかそうそうぶっちゃけた話英霊だけでは強力な魔術神秘には太刀打ちできないわ
けれどそこにホーグが絡んでくると話は別よホーグを操る英霊は数段格上の精霊さえ打ち滅ぼす何しろ伝説上に現れる聖剣魔剣はほとんど魔法の域に近いんだもの最強の幻想種である竜を殺す剣だの万里をかける靴だの果ては神殺しの魔剣までともかくこれで無敵じゃないはずがないっていうぐらい英霊たちが持つ武装は桁が違うサーバントの戦いはこの宝具のぶつかり合いにあると言っても過言じゃないわつまり英霊であるサーバントは必ず一つその宝具を持ってるってことだなええ原則として一人の英霊が持てるのは一つの宝具だけとされるわ And of course, there are exceptions to that rule. 大抵は剣とかやりねほら中国に破山剣ってあるじゃない一振りしかできないけどその一振りで山をもたつっていう魔術品それと似たようなものだと思うもっともホーグはその神明を呪文にして発動する奇跡だからそうおいそれと使えるものじゃないんだけど。武器の名前を口にするだけで発動するんだろなんだってそれでおいそれと使えないなんてことになるんだ Come on, Shiro, it's cause then you can figure out what the hero's true name is あのね、武器の名前を言えばそのサーバントがどこの英雄か分かっちゃうじゃない英雄と魔剣はセットなんだから武器の名前が分かれば持ち主の名前もおのずと知れてしまうそうなったら長所も短所も丸分かりでしょなるほどあそりゃ確かに Now that I think back, when Lancer used his noble phantasm, Saber immediately figured out his identity. Something about Ireland's child of light. <sighs> okay, so. Servants are separated by classes, and each of them are heroic spirits suited to that class. They're all concealing their identities. And the weapons that they wield are the most powerful aces they got up their sleeve. But they can't use it freely, or they would just wind up revealing their identity. Ijo de Sarbanto Nitsuite no Kogi wa Wari. Kuashi koto wa sono ho mi leba wakaru kara, kito iki tsuita ra meo tosi na sai. Nare te kureba, sono ho nga nakte mo chokkan de Sarbanto o handan de kiru yo ni naru kara. With that, Tosaka stands up. Well, let me look real quick. Oh, I can check this. Servant. Oh, it does show us all this stuff. True name, unknown, skills, yeah, magic resistance, writing, intuition, mana burst. And invisible air, barrier of the wind king. So yeah, just the barrier itself is her noble phantasm. Lancer. Yeah, true name, Cool <laughs> We already know. Because he used his noble phantasm. Wow, god damn, they really give a lot of stuff here. That's great. Magic resistance, battle continuation, disengage, and divinity. Right. You know, I always forget Ku does have divinity, huh? And uh, Noble Phantasm, Gay Bolg. High agility cannot prevent Gay Bolg. Instead, a high luck is necessary to reverse one's fortunes. Oh, yeah, his luck is E. What's. Uh, B rank luck. Saber had a good chance at that. Neutral balanced. Magic resistance, independent action. And that's all you have. Know nothing about you, don't know Ryder, don't know Caster, don't know Assassin, but we do know a Berserker. Jesus fucking Christ. You know, it almost seems a little unfair when you look at the stats. A plus, A, 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 B, A. Yeah, that's about right. Fucking Heracles. Oh, man. 
Madness Enhancement, Battle Continuation, Mind's Eye, False, Valor, A, Divinity, A. And Noble Phantasm, Unknown. Immortality that was gained from a god's blessing curse turns the body into sturdy armor, nullifies all attacks ranked B or lower. Yeah, that's, uh, fucking crazy. An unnamed axe sword, yeah, that. Heracles was especially proficient with the bow, but he has lost his weapons and techniques due to madness enhancement. Right. Because people are always saying, oh, we want to see Archer Heracles. Yeah, that's the thing he's... Oh, hey. So this is what the flow chart looks like. I guess these are bad ends or something. Alright. I guess some of these would branch off in different directions. Holy shit, okay. Okay, so we are here, heading this way. Okay, so with that, Tosaka stands up. I'm still sitting on the floor, so I look up at Tosaka as she gets ready to leave. After making very clear where we stand, Tosaka leaves for her home. I can already feel myself getting less and less stressed once Tosaka leaves. My feverish body is suddenly overcome with exhaustion and I collapse to the floor. I lie on my side to try to ignore the nausea creeping back over me. The tickling of the uh, the ticking of the clock echoes throughout the quiet living room. I still don't understand what the heck that is. All I know is that I don't know much. It may have felt more real to me if I, if I was even a little more interested in the Holy Grail. A grail that supposedly grants wishes. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's an artifact powerful enough to summon servants. It may not grant every wish, but it's more than valuable enough for a mage. And yet, I have no interest. I might be skeptical because it doesn't feel real to me. But I also feel it's not fair to take a shortcut like that. Yet this is a game of musical chairs. No matter how I feel about it, I'll need to overcome my competition to survive, now that I'm involved. And one of the methods to get rid of the competition could be to involve and harm other innocent people. That's why... My reason to fight in the Holy Grail War is not to survive and win. It's to do everything I can to stop those who will try to win by any means necessary. I feel dizzy again. That's not surprising. No matter how much my body appears healed, it was nearly split in half just a few hours ago. This feeling isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I felt this way for the rest of my life. I was very nearly killed three times in one day. There's no denying that someone with no power will wind up hurt if they participate in battle. My own ineptitude nearly cost me my own body. Then that girl got hurt trying to protect me. <sighs> I try to sit back up. Sold heights. I can't believe myself. I completely forgot about her because Tosaka had settled here herself, uh, had settled herself in my living room. Maybe it's more that I was just avoiding thinking about her. 
I'm such a coward. I was avoiding thinking about the girl who was bleeding miserably, even though I was the reason she got hurt in the first place. I shoved myself back up to my feet. Tosaka never said anything about Saber. The only thing she said was that she and Saber brought me home, but she didn't elaborate. The very first thing I should have asked was whether the girl was safe since Berserker wounded her. I suppress my nausea as I make my way through the mansion. Saber is nowhere to be found. I even checked the detached guest rooms, but I can't find her. Even so, a fully armed and, and armored saber still eludes me. Supposedly, servants can turn to spirit forms, but unfortunately, she can't with me. No, first of all... I don't even know what saber is or how servants are able to exist. It's like a new soldier suddenly gets awarded with a tank. But what's fortunate is that this tank has an autopilot. Even if the soldier is incompetent, the tank will run on its own. I bang my head against the pillar, frustrated by my own thoughts. I apologize to the blonde girl, internally. Right now, I need to find her and see if she's okay. She's not here. I've looked around the entire house. It's the size of a traditional Japanese inn, but I played hide-and-seek with Fujine when I was a kid, so I know the most efficient way to search it. She must be in the dojo or the shed if she isn't in the house itself. She told me she was going to protect me, so she's not likely to leave the house. I suddenly remember another place. If she's not in the house, the yard, or the shed where we first met, there's another big building with a compound within the compound. I head over as quick as I can. My destination is the Kendo Dojo in, the, in a detached building. I'm getting a little nervous. If she's not there, I'll have to accept that she's just disappeared. I realize something. I have no clue who she is, but I still want her to be here. I enter an enclosed room, completely absent any ornamentation. It's not a room to live in, and it's a dojo designed only for training. Within the tranquil room, lit by the sun. Oh, there she is. Hey, Saber. She sits, as if she's always belonged there. The place is hushed, serene. The sunlight coming in is white and untainted, allowing the girl to be one with the dojo. It's the same girl who wielded her sword without hesitation, protecting me from Lancer last night under the moonlight. That golden mane of hers, which had soaked in the blue-white moonlight, now glitters in the sunlight. And then I remember. This is exactly how I felt when I first saw her. She was clad in armor, wielding her sword and silently overwhelming the enemy. The extraordinary sight of her isn't what surprised me. In fact, it didn't matter how she looked. Even if she'd been covered in mud, I don't think my reaction would have been any different. The girl who had so moved me is still right here, in front of me. I just... admire her. Forgetting even to breathe. To hell with being a master in the Holy Grail War. In this moment, I have completely accepted the girl called Saber. I don't know how much time elapsed. Saber opens her eyes as if waking from a slumber. I sound disappointed and my voice echoes throughout the dojo in silence. Saber notices and stands up without making a sound. She walks toward me before I can think of what to say. Her voice is serene. Something rich and calm about her voice hangs in the air. I managed to answer, at least. Shiro, 
I recoil from her. I avert my eyes and try to get my heartbeat under control before my chest bursts. I take a deep breath. But I don't think this feeling is going away anytime soon. Saber's appearance is drastically different from yesterday. Her outfit now is so ordinary, in stark contrast to her armor. Her appearance takes me by surprise. She seems more... real, which confuses the hell out of me. Seriously, she's drop-dead gorgeous. I mean, I saw that yesterday, but it's actually setting in now. As soon as we make eye contact, I can feel my nervousness grow. Then again, I wasn't looking everywhere for her just to stay silent. It's uncomfortable, but I can't let it be awkward forever. I bite the bullet. But then... She interrupts me, obviously displeased, making her earlier claim hard to fathom. いいけど、女だよ、話して。ですから昨夜の件です。シロは私のマスターでしょう。そのあなたがあのような行動をしては困る。戦闘は私の領分なのですから、シロは自分の役割に徹してください。自分から無駄死にをされては、私でも守りよう
This will be the last time I whine aloud or think negatively. No matter how I get involved, I've decided to fight. Shiro. あ、いや、なんでもない。けど、せば、俺についても勝ち目は薄いぞ。俺は遠さかみたいに知識も力もないから、明日にでも昨日みたいなことになりかねない。それでもいいのか。それは戦う意志がない。ということですか。戦う意
そうだったのかそれが何かいやうんだから I want to tell her they look good on her, but I managed to stop myself. If I said something like that, I'd probably go beat red. Shiro. Ah, yes, no. Dakara, hora. Eto, a kino no yoroi. So, ano yoroi wa do s t a no kana te omote. Sore de stara s i m p a wa ili masen. Uso no umu a ziu na mode. Kono fuku de ilu toki wa hazu s t ilu no des. Ano yoroi wa watashi no maruku de amare ta mono. I can only respond with amazement. Anyway, there's no doubt she'd draw a lot of attention going around in that armor. But with Saber wearing something like that, I can probably make up some story to the neighbors that she's a distant relative of my old man or something. Well, actually, I have to do that anyway. But then, I hear something heavy hit the floor by the door. I turn to face the sound. At the door. Oh, hey, Ren. There's Tosaka, a duffel bag at her feet. Hi? My mind comes to a screeching halt. I thought Tosaka had gone home, but here she is, at the dojo in her ordinary clothes. Why is she carrying so much stuff? I don't think we talked about that. It's more so an alliance instead of cohabitation. I can't even speak. I need something. I need to say something, or else this is going to turn into a huge mess. But my brain refuses to work. <laughs> she just pushes right by me, brashly invading my home. Wouldn't this be wrong? I mean, Tosaka's pretty much the school's idol. Having her in my house at all is already a big deal, but I don't know how people will react if she started staying here or living with me. Fujine would absolutely kill me, and, well, maybe this is just a plot on Tosaka's part to get rid of a master? <laughs> ああ、ついでに彼女の部屋も用意したら私のあちゃんと違って白のサーバントはかさばるんだからちゃんと寝る場所を与えておかないとまあ布団一組あればノープログレムって言うなら別にいいけどわっ、イシンプライングセイバー
You were right, Isai. It's not that Rin Tosaka might be a cruel enchantress. She is one. ねえ、好きにしろ。お父さんの呼びやすい方で構わない。さ、なら<笑> シロが嫌だって言うんだから諦めたら。それは違う。シロは困ると言っただけで嫌だとは言っていない。セイバー。だってさ、その辺りどうなの、シロ？Hold on a minute. I don't understand how in a single day she can just casually start calling me Shiro like a cat she just picked up and named. Oh, well, that's not really the issue here. This is about Saber's living arrangement. My decision won't change no matter how much she stares at me like that. ダメだぞ、すごんでも。とにかく男として、こればかりは譲らないからな。セイバーも少しは自分の立場ってものを考えろってんだ。ですから、私はサーバントとしてマスターを守護しようと。そうじゃなくて、自分のことだってのは、も
That means it's something she doesn't want Tosaka to hear. I don't think Tosaka would hear us since she's in the detached area of the house, but I think I... But I can't forget that she's still a master. She could just as easily listen in. And besides, the veranda is hardly a place to talk in private. The moment we step into my room, Saber's eyes widen with surprise. あ、セイバーをびっくりさせるようなものがないというより何もないではないですか。本当にここがあなたの部屋なのですか。Saber Saber steps into the Japanese style room, turning her hand, running her hand along the wall and sliding the paper door, uh, and sliding paper door, feel, feeling its texture. Her touch is gentle, as if contact with these things will let her learn the history, see their memories. あ、暖かい。ああ、もうそうかな。屋敷の作りなのか、この部屋って夏は涼しく冬は暖かなんだ。ええ。部屋は持ち主の心象ですから。白の心の在り方に不安を覚えましたが、これなら今までの印象と造
uh, which she lets show in revealing how frustrated she may be. Uh, which she lets show in revealing how she's frustrated she may be inferior to Berserker as a hero. セイバーが工夫しようとしているのはわかるよ。それとバーサーカーだけど、あれは反則だろう。セイバーが落ち込むことはないし、それに俺から見たらセイバーは全然負けてない。あんな傷を負ってたのに真正面から打ち合ってた
このようなことはなかったので断言はできませんが前回も総戦闘数は7回に満たなかった私が倒さずともサーバントはサーバントによって減っていくのですからそうか別に全員が全員とやり合わなくちゃいけないってわけじゃないんだうまくすれば簡単にこの戦いを終わらせることができる The only people I need to fight are those who start doing things no person should. I can't imagine all seven would be like that. Even Tosaku, who seems eager to fight, would still abide by the rules of mages. And as long as the other five masters act humanely, I have no intention of fighting them. Saber even said she didn't fight seven times last time, so this time around, I... Hold on a minute. Last time. Fewer than seven... times? Wait a minute, Saber. That... 以前もセイバーだったのかあいやそうじゃなくて前回も聖杯戦争に参加してたっていうのか私がこの聖杯の争いに参加するのは二度目ですその時も私はセイバーでした中には複数のクラス属性を持つ英霊もいるようですが私はセイバーに従いたいと思います<笑> really funny that? After nine years of FGO When we have God knows how many sabers. <laughs> um, how many? I think she has one variant for every fucking class now that I think about it. I think, what, are we only missing Alter Ego? Moon Cancer, too, I think. Well, the, the general classes, anyway. Not the extra classes. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, every, every, reg every one of those seven regular classes we have a saber for. <laughs> I just find that really funny. Only falls under the saber class, though. I remember something Tosaka said. She said that out of the seven servant classes, saber is the best one. And this girl says that she's been summoned as that class twice in a row. Oh, so Saber says this as if it should be obvious. Her statement forces me to realize something. The sword in my possession now is not something I'm worthy of. I don't deserve her. それじゃ不満だろう、セイバー。俺みたいなのがマスターだと。私は与えられた役割をこなすだけです。聖杯さえ手に入るのであれば、マスターに不満はありません。そうか。それは助かるけど、それでも。She used to be fully prepared and capable hands, but she's been injured twice already. All because she can't replenish her magical energy. That means she'll constantly have to consider how much magical energy she has left as she fights. And because she needs to fight with all these restrictions, in her last battle, she wound up covered in her own blood. The image still haunts my mind. I still see that girl, small and slighter, smaller and slighter than me, being so brutally injured. シロその後悔は余分なことですセイバーズ・ボイス・スナップス・ミバック・トゥ・リアリティ私も負け知らずだったわけではありません私は勝ちきれなかったからこそこうしてあなたのサーバントになっている傷を負うことには慣れていますからあなたが悔やむことなどない慣れてるってあんな死ぬような怪我でもかええ剣を取るということは傷つくということですそれはあなたも同じでしょう私だけが傷つかないという道理はないと思いますが That's a fair point それはそうだけどそれじゃ怪我をしても構わないっていうのかセイバーはそれが死に至る傷でなければ死んでしまってはマスターを守れなくなりますから
だそれマスターを守るためなら傷を負っても構わないなんていうのかお前はそれがサーバントの役割ですから確かにリンの言葉は正論ですねサーバントを人間として扱う必要などない私たちはマスターを守るための道具ですあなたもそれを正しく把握するべきだハビングセッハーピースサイバーワークストーデスライディングドアハビングセッハーピースサイバーワークストーデスライディングドアハビングセッハーピースサイバーワークストーデスライディングドアハビングセッハーピースサイバーワークストーデスライディングドアハビングセッハーピースサイバーワークストーデスライディングドアハビングセッハーピースサイバーワークストーデスライディングドアハビングセッハーピースサイバーワークストーデスライディングドアハビングマスターを守るための道具ですあなたもそれを正しく把握するべきだなんだそれ Pisses me off But I can't say that aloud So I just take in Saber's words and stand alone Perplexed I sit at the edge of the veranda And mindlessly look up at the blue sky I may not be sleeping during the day like Saber, but I still need rest. I'm not nauseous anymore, but I still feel terrible. On top of that, all the unexpected things that have happened are weighing heavily on me. <sighs> I take a deep breath and look blankly out over the yard. I asked about everything I needed to know, and I got answers, but I'm no less lost for it. And yet, Tosaka, my senior as a mage, or rather a full fledged master, is completely nonchalant about the whole situation. ねえ余ってるクッションとかないあとビーカーと分度器クッションなら隣の客間のを持ってけけどビーカーと分度器なんて普通の家には置いてないは信じられない魔術師なら実験用具ぐらい置いておくものよ complaining loudly she turns and heads back towards the detached building 本当に本気みたいだな、遠坂のやつ。And the matter of her staying overnight seems to also be settled. When I peeked into the detached building earlier, she'd already picked out the best room for herself. She even put up a sign that read, Remodeling in process, in progress, do not enter. <laughs> 別棟なら遠いし、問題はないよな。Having Saber around already has me on edge, but if Tosaka were close too, there'd be nowhere for me to relax anymore. The detached building is far enough, and even though it's connected by a corridor, it feels like a neighboring house. As long as I keep my distance, nothing bad should happen. Oh, but I guess we'll see each other during meals. And there's only one bath here, so we'll have to decide when each of us will use it. Wait a minute, Saber's a girl too, so. <laughs> I shake my head violently and slump back onto the floor. <sighs> With what must be my millionth sigh today, I stare blankly up at the sky. I'm getting drowsy. Must be more tired than I realized. <sighs> I just go ahead and close my eyes. Apparently, not caring at all works wonders. The moment I close my eyes, I drift right off to sleep. The next thing I know, the sun has long since set, and Saber, Tosaka, and I have gathered around in the living room. I've only just woken up, and Saber is already in the living room, and Tosaka had just finished remodeling her room. By the way, this is what the guest room looked like a few hours ago. But now. Shiro! This was what I saw after being summoned for something so trivial. Even Fujine wouldn't have bothered me with it. <laughs> the room is transformed into. this. I sure know how to pick a teammate. I'm uncomfortable. My house is playing host to not one but two invaders. I'm all the more unsettled because I so rarely have guests here. 
Actually, these two don't even look like they belong in a Japanese-style house to begin with. The time is almost 7 o'clock at night. Everyone's in the living room, but staying quiet and doing nothing isn't really good for my mental well-being. ちょっと待って。その前に一つ決めておきたいんだけど、いいかしら。何言って夕食のことよ。シロずっと一人暮らしだったのよね。まあ、そういうことになるけど。なら食事は自分で作ってきたのよね。そりゃ作るだろう。
I don't know that my cooking skills are going to be problematic to Tosaka, but she's right. The food prep is pretty much the food prep is pretty much done, so I need to concentrate and finish the dishes now. アインツベルンは何回か聖杯に届きそうになったっていう魔術師の家系だから。聖杯戦争にはなれているということですね。でしょうね。他の連中がどうだか知らないけど、イリアスフィールは最大の障害と見て間違いないわ。本来バーサー
but we go ahead and start dinner. I'm giving her the silent treatment. After what happened earlier, I don't want to talk to Tosaka, and I'm too embarrassed to even look at Saber. Saber eats in silence. Her movements are elegant. I can't believe she's the same girl who was swinging a sword earlier. And I can't put a finger on it, but... Every time she takes a bite of something she hasn't eaten before, she nods. It's... amusing. Seems to be her way of saying the food is good. Also, it turns out she can use chopsticks properly. Tosaka, on the other hand... <laughs> the moment she takes her first bite, she clenches her fist and says, Alright, I can do better than this. <laughs> Tosaka's fist trembles with excitement. Dear God. Have I done something bad? <laughs> the two raise their heads simultaneously. Wait, 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 wait. I'm already nervous with just one of them around, so having the two react in unison like that is torture. さ、<笑> まあ、それはいいわ。どうせ他の連中はみんな気配を立ってるだろうし。魔術師の気配から辿る線は無理っぽいもの。セイバーはどう？サーバントはサーバントを感知できるって言うけど、多少はできますが、あくまで身近で能
セイバーはレーターになれないんだから学校までついてこられない学校シロは学生なのですかそうだけどああそうかセイバーは生徒じゃないんだから学校には入れない学校に行っている間はうちで待機してもらうしかないかな学校に行かないということはできないんですかシロできないよ普段通り生活しろってんなら学校には行かなくちゃそれに学校に危険はないあれだけ人がいる場所ってのもそうはないぞですが大丈夫よセイバー学校には私だっているんだからもしもの時はフォローするわだからもしもの時なんてないってわかりましたマスターがそう言うのでしたら従いますセイバー doesn't look convinced but she still nods in agreement Night falls. Tosaka looks like she prepared herself a bath while I was cleaning up after dinner. Honestly, she's acting like she owns this place right from the start. Easier said than done. I get the sense seizing the initiative is going to be really hard. <sighs> Actually, Saber's probably my bigger obstacle. Tosaka can be reasoned with, but Saber seems completely impossible to convince no matter what. Saber. Saber's back in her room. Tosaka's probably back in her own room in the detached area of the house. I'm the only one in the living room. There's still time before bedtime, so I should probably talk to Saber a bit more. Honestly, I'll need to overcome my awkwardness around her, or else I'm going to suffer for it. Whether she's a servant or not, she's still a girl, and younger than me. I'm sure I could learn a lot about her if we talked. Plus... And that's a problem. I don't want that, so I should work on talking to her more casually. I go back to my own room. The room next to mine, separated by a single sliding door, is Saber's room. Saber, Saber slides the door open. I try to get the hammering of my heart under control as she comes near. Calm down. I'm only going to talk to her as a master. Shiro, ああ、いや、そんなことはない。体の方は特に大丈夫だ。それを言うならセイバーの方こそいいのか。はい。問題はありません。今の状態では感知まで時間はかかりますが、このままでも平均値はクリアしていますから。マーサーカー以外の相手
必要な質問なら答えますがいや今のは忘れてくれバカなことを口走りそうになっただけだ I heard my eyes to try to change the topic It really was a stupid question I thought it wasn't, I wasn't interested in Saber's identity and Saber's been refusing to tell me because it's not safe Bringing up something like this would just prove I'm a bad master dwelling on unimportant stuff But what else can I talk to her about then? If I can't ask anything about Saber, the only other topics left would be me. That would be even more pointless. I'm grasping at straws here. If I can't ask about her identity, I'll just have to ask about what Saber likes. Or what she wants to eat for breakfast tomorrow. I don't care if she's going to look at me funny. I'm ready to ask all the futile questions I want. Shiro, if you don't have any questions, I'll ask you to ask me. Well, it's okay, but what? サクヤのことです。シロは私を助けようとしてバーサーカーに打ち倒されました。それは覚えていますね。覚えているけど、なんだよ。朝の続きをしたいのか。軽率な行動だったってのは分かってるから、あんまり思い出させないでくれ。それ
I'm still lying on my side, eyes wide open. This is my room. I should be sleeping, but it feels completely different now. It's quiet, but I hear Sabres breathing in the next room. Uh, I know. Of course I can hear sound coming from the next room if it's quiet. Since I can hear her breathing, I find myself imagining Sabre's sleeping form. Oops, that steam pop-ups pop up in the recording. I might have to do something about that. I can't just stay in this whole bed of, need of needles situation forever. I sneak out of my futon, try not to wake Saber up. Unless she's, also, unless she's a deep sleeper. I question whether she can really protect her master this way, but there's no immediate danger. If servants are linked to masters, she would probably wake up immediately if her master is in danger. The lights in the detached building are out. She's either just that defiant, or maybe she's just naturally adaptable. Because Tosaka managed to blend in here ju in just a day. Yep, she's a handful. But she is helpful. One bit of evidence that is of that is the bandage wrapped around my hand. The command spell's master's bear appears somewhere on their arm. Mine appeared on the back of my left hand. Clothes won't work to hide it, so I'll need to use bandages, even if it looks a bit awkward. Tosaka has hers on the opposite hand from mine, around the middle of her right hand, or somewhere around there. The shape of command spells differ for each master, and I don't think I'll ever see Tosaka's command spell. Silence falls over the shed. This is where Lancer cornered me yesterday, and where Saber appeared. The entrance is still open, and it's pitch dark inside, as if to repel anyone who might try to enter. But this darkness is familiar to me. I used to play here when I was young, and I feel it to be my real room. It sits silently under the wintry night sky. I step inside. After closing the door to shut out the cold, I turn on the stove. I sit down in the middle of the shed and take a deep breath. I should train. No pauses. Magecraft is a mental discipline to me, so I shouldn't skimp on my training for no good reason. I begin my training by getting my breathing under control. The usual images pop into my head. The image of a sword drifts into my empty mind. I try to ignore it and clear my head. As soon as my magical energy runs through my... Uh, as soon as magical energy runs through my body, I begin my usual training. My strengthening magecraft succeeded for the first time in years when I was attacked by Lancer last night. I need to recreate that same feeling before I forget, or else it'll, it'll have been for nothing. Torres. I close my eyes halfway and release the air from my lungs. That's all I can do for now. As I concentrate, everything fades away. The Holy Grail War, Saber, Tosaka... If I allow my thoughts to slide into nothingness, any immature hesitations will fall away, and I'll finally get a good night's sleep. Okay. So, we'll end things off here, and in the next one we'll start up day five. So, I will see you all then. Bye!